Hey guys, here's five tips to help your next cruise vacation feel more luxurious. The last one is very important because I know most of you guys are not doing this. Number one is booking the specialty dining package. Mm -hmm. Most cruise lines offer either an unlimited specialty dining package or you can purchase a la carte like two, three, four nights, whatever it is. It depends on the length of your cruise. But if you've never been in a specialty dining restaurant, Courtney and I feel that it is significantly better in quality, taste, value, service, service literally everything. It so. is. It definitely is. It upgrades our cruises so, so much when we're able to do those specialty dining restaurants. So highly, highly recommend. Yeah, this goes for pretty much every cruise line. Uh, the main cruise lines has a specialty dining component to mm -hmm. it. So MSC, Royal, Carnival, Norwegian all have these extra restaurants on board. So. Right. Um, it could be a steakhouse, it could be a hibachi restaurant, Italian, French, French. yeah, there's, there's a bunch of them. There's a bunch, and so your main dining room is included with the price that you pay to go on the mm -hmm. cruise. These are normally going to be for a fee, additional charges, and so what we recommend is that you pre-book ahead of time a package that will either give you those two to four or five nights included, or Royal Caribbean has something cool where it is an unlimited specialty dining package. Mm -hmm. And when you do this, you can typically bring the price per meal down yeah. to like $30 to $40 per person per meal. Whereas if you were just gonna go sit down in that restaurant and pay for it a la carte on your own, you're, you're more than likely gonna be paying 50 to even $80, 80 yeah. per person for that meal. And sometimes if you're in the steakhouse and you're getting an appetizer, entree, dessert, you could be almost at $100 per it person. It adds up very quickly. Also a cool thing on Royal is you can go for lunch sometimes. So yes. especially restaurants are open for lunches a lot of the days. Uh, we especially love, sea days. Yeah, yeah, sea days definitely. We love going to the steakhouse and getting a nice little Caesar salad with a steak, but that's a really cool thing on Royal. Other cool thing on Royal is this is like a bonus tip for you guys is that the, um, what is the ice cream brand called? Ben and Jerry's. Uh, ben and Jerry's. Ben and Jerry's yes. is a four fee dessert place on board. Mm -hmm. But if you have the uh, unlimited specialty dining package or the ultimate specialty dining package with Royal Caribbean and you go to Playmakers, Playmakers is their sports bar. Yep. Most Playmakers on Royal Caribbean ship it costs extra to order food and mm -hmm. dessert there. It's not necessarily as much as a specialty dining restaurant. It's normally like In eight between. bucks here, ten bucks here something like that. But you can order ice cream at Playmakers with your special, unlimited specialty dining package and they will walk across <laughs> the hallway to Ben & Jerry's, get you three scoops of whatever flavor you want, bring it back, it's included in the package. So yep. that's just a fun little, little bonus, hack. Little bonus <laughs> tip. But um, we, love, we love the slightly elevated dining side of things. Mm -hmm. Like I think the service, they just take much better care of you. They do. The food quality is a significant increase. So if Courtney and I were to on average rate main dining room, buffet food, like a six out of 10, mm -hmm. listen, we have like fairly high standards when it comes to food, we but do. a six out of 10, I'd say is average across all the cruise lines we've been for just like main dining room food. Yeah. We'd say the specialty is like a nine out of 10. Yeah, so, you're looking at like a four or a five star restaurant sometimes on these ships. That's what they wild. feel like. So you're actually getting a pretty good deal if you look at it that way. Yeah. <laughs> so highly recommend specialty dining package. That's number one. Tip number two, you're gonna wanna make sure to call your drinks at the bar. So you're gonna wanna specify your liquor. That's right. I think that so many people are, they have the beverage package, mm -hmm. they're going up to the bar and they're ordering a vodka soda, mm -hmm. rum and coke margarita and what do they put when you just order a regular margarita they're just going to give you the well alcohol which is the lowest the lowest liquor that they have yep but if you go in and you ask for a specific tequila margarita patron margarita don julio margarita they're going to include that in the drink and you can ask the bartenders hey what is include what is the best available spirit choice that is included in my package. Mm -hmm. Most of the times you are going to get the highest or I guess the most premium yeah. liquors um, when you do these unlimited alcohol packages. Um, there are some that There's a upgrade. couple exceptions. Yeah. yeah. But for the most part, you're getting top shelf alcohol. Top yeah. Shelf I know liquor, Norwegian liquor. and MSC both have tiers where it's like the entry level beverage package and then there's the premium. But mm -hmm. even at the entry level package, it includes some of the 
more mid to upper tier spirits mm -hmm. like the Tito's of the world, right. even Hendrix gin. Like there yeah. is some nice stuff up there that most people think is only included in the top package. But if you look at what's included in your package, you'd be shocked. And I don't know. We just think one, I think it does taste better. That's big controversy. People are like, <laughs> you're never be able to taste it in a mixed drink, but I think that it does taste better. But mm -hmm. honestly for us, I just rather put the slightly less <laughs> bad ingredients in my body lately less toxic yeah i think your hangovers aren't as bad and so i would just always lean towards putting the slightly more premium thing in my drink again when i we're on cruises i do i feel like I, i'm drinking a lot of like x liquor mixed with soda water mm -hmm. and that's when you, you can, can definitely taste, taste the a difference little bit more. and like why wouldn't you if you paid for that unlimited alcohol package why wouldn't you get the best stuff why wouldn't you get the stuff that costs the most when you're not on a cruise you know and listen Honestly, we even do it for like the frozen drinks. So if oh, I'm yeah. asking for a strawberry daiquiri, <laughs> say put the best rum in it. If I'm asking for a frozen margarita, put the best tequila in it. Mm -hmm. You can do that. The bartenders are all about it. Like they have no they problem die. with it at all. They are <laughs> wanting to make sure that you guys are getting the best service that you are paying for. And so. if it's included, do it. Why not? <laughs> Number three, guys, this one is very, very controversial mm -hmm. and you guys will understand <laughs> why, but we highly recommend that you book your excursions outside of the cruise line unless it's your first cruise that you've ever been on. Yes. <laughs> we understand, book through the cruise line. It is um, safer to book through the cruise line because in the worst case scenario mm -hmm. that your excursion is late, if you booked it through the cruise line, the ship will wait for you. If you don't book it through the cruise line and something happens, Ships they will wait. leave you. They will leave you. <laughs> Listen, so that's why people always get riled up when we have this conversation. But how many cruises have you been on? 25. And I've been on about 13 and knock on wood, Hasn't happened yet. Hasn't and happened yet. We've booked a lot of. Excursions. Why do you think that is though? Why? Why are? How are we picking the excursions through Viator and TripAdvisor that are getting us back on time? You always want to go with the most highly rated excursions, right? right? So we're always reading reviews. We're looking for the ones that have thousands on thousands of five star reviews because these companies are going to want to get you back to the ship on time if they get you back late if something goes wrong they have a bad reputation and they're going to get bad reviews and they don't want that so they're doing everything in their That's power right. to get you back early so that you're not missing the ship the other thing that we like about booking outside of the cruise line is one it feels more luxurious to us like mm -hmm. a lot of times it is much smaller groups yeah. cue some photos and videos <laughs> of cruise line excursions that we booked through we like to call it we feel like we're sardines in a can just so Switch. many so many people on them <laughs> versus when we booked outside the cruise line we've had private excursions like we have. boats by ourselves catamarans had, almost yeah. by ourselves in greece there were 10, 10 people, people on an entire catamaran 40 50 person catamaran yeah the cruise line would have booked that 40 50 even 60 on our last cruise excursion it was, crazy. It was 60 um so yeah definitely just you feel more luxurious when you're on yep. there you feel like it's you know you're getting better service and then you're just not squished that's right. And I think that the, the crew, these are a lot of small businesses. Mm -hmm. They're private, small, smaller companies, and they're incentivized to make sure that you have the time of your life because they want your review. Yeah. They want you to go on Viator and TripAdvisor and leave a five-star review for them. Sometimes with the cruise lines, you, they don't put that pressure on you to leave a review. And sometimes mm -hmm. when you do leave the review, you're just leaving it on the cruise line's website. Because they'll never, sh you know, when you go to the shore excursion desk, yeah. you don't see the reviews. If you're flipping through the catalog, even if you're looking online, a lot of times you're not seeing reviews. You're just seeing a list of what that excursion is. And it's usually a lot more expensive to book through the cruise line. That's right. The price <laughs> is sometimes scary how different they are. So Double, triple you have of what? Five times the amount of people <laughs> and two or three times the cost. Whereas if you book a reliable five-star excursion outside of the cruise line, you are going to have just a much better experience. So as, if it's not your first cruise, give that a try, guys. Our mm -hmm. favorite sites are TripAdvisor and Viator to check out. Tip number four, book the spa package. Guys, they have these crazy thermal suites on a lot of these cruise lines. They're really so cool. <laughs> we've done them on Royal, MSC, and Norwegian, most yeah. recently on MSC. And so we booked the thermal suite pass, and I pre-booked it online for my seven day Always cruise. Pre-booking pre <laughs> can save you a lot of money. So I think that I paid about $20 per day to use the thermal spa. So seven day cruise, it was $140. Yeah. That included the gratuities, the fees, all the stuff that they would have done. When we got on board, we heard that they were trying to sell the thermal pass to other people for like 50 or $60 a day. Dang. 
Yeah. Or if you just wanted to buy a one day pass, it was like a like hundred dollars or like 180 yeah. for a couple, which is crazy. Absolutely crazy. It was like more than <laughs> double the price. Yeah. What I like about this area is one, it's not very crowded, yeah. especially if you guys listen to our final tip, you'll know why it's not very crowded. But I love just like the jacuzzi, the sauna, the steam room. Mm -hmm. They actually had an outdoor deck. So if I couldn't find a lounge chair for whatever reason, I always had a guaranteed lounge chair chair out you there. You did, in the, yeah. And in then, the yeah, with the jacuzzi, was jacuzzi. so nice. And then what? There was a ship that had a snow room. Was yeah. it MSC? MSC has it. Norwegian has it. Yeah, a lot of them, a lot have, of them snow have snow rooms, rooms which is just yeah, kind of cool. It's just Steam a good rooms. way to like have some health and wellness to mm -hmm. combat all those premium spirits <laughs> that you guys are now gonna start. It's drinking. nice to start the morning with it, yeah. right? Gym, or, sauna, and yeah. um, so I highly recommend doing that. And this was a cruise where we had four ports and three sea days, and I was in there every day. We would come back from a port day, I would hop in, I would use the facilities, and I just loved it. So Very if you guys are, you. yeah, if you if you think you're gonna use the spa, jacuzzi, jacuzzi sauna, more than like two or three times on a cruise, mm -hmm. it's worth doing it if you pre-book it, $100, $140 for a seven day cruise. Felt like it was really good value, so. Definitely. All right guys, tip number five, our fifth and final tip to make your next cruise vacation feel more luxurious is to go where the people are not going. <laughs> Do the opposite. So think in your head, if you are an experienced cruiser, what are most people doing in that exact moment? So if everyone is rushing to the mustard drill, yes. right? Why not delay and go towards the tail end of the mustard drill time mm -hmm. period? Because it, it gets crazy. What happens on day one, embarkation day? Where does everyone go to eat? Everybody goes directly to the buffet, and if they want to drink, they're going to go to the first bar they see, like the very first one. So walking You know on you're the ship, guilty of that. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't yeah, want Yeah, I've to? done it before. But we've learned, you know, in the past few years of cruising, you need to just walk around, yep. right? You need to take in your surroundings. Go, go where the people are not. You know, go look at your try to find your favorite spot on the ship. I like main main dining room That's on a day good. one. Yeah. you can sit down and it's, it's open. It's open, but most people are rushing to the buffet. We mm -hmm. also wear our bathing suits on embarkation day so that we mm -hmm. can go right to the pool yep. and we don't have to worry about any of that. The pool bar is normally not that crowded because again, most people are just crowding that first bar when they get on board. Mm -hmm. so. Or the buffet or the buffet bar. Another like example that. of this in practice is. Is when you're disembarking at a port yes so say that you that your ship gets in at 8 a.m. or you're able to get off the ship at 8 a.m. what time do you think everybody's gonna get off 755 <laughs> they're gonna get <laughs> they're line. gonna line up right so they're gonna get off like right at 8 a.m. what we like to do is we like to go grab a coffee and like watch the chaos yeah. and then when it dies down which is usually what 30 minutes 830 845 mm -hmm. you have an open gangway you can just walk <laughs> straight off the ship because you would be waiting in a 30 minute line or you could sit, drink your coffee, coffee and then walk straight off in a minute or two. Especially coffees are included <laughs> in a lot of the beverage packages guys. So uh -huh. ask and check about that. If you too, like your but. lattes. We, we just hear so much feedback from people about they get on cruise ships. I felt so crowded. Mm -hmm. There were so many people there. And when we're posting the videos out to the world, people are like, oh my goodness, it looks like you guys had a great ship. It wasn't crowded. You guys right. beat the crowds. It was like, no, our ship was completely sold out. We just knew when and where and how to avoid people. Like mm -hmm. the um, main dining room lobster night does not get us that excited, but that's where everyone goes on formal night. Main mm -hmm. dining room, they do the surf and turf included lobster. So that night we're either gonna do specialty dining or if it's like a really crazy day, we might just hit the buffet. Yeah, <laughs> and it's we'll have it to ourselves. Yeah. And then we can go on the pool deck and watch sunset while yeah. everyone is getting ready for dinner and everyone's in the main dining room. Courtney and I have the pool deck to ourselves to watch the sunset and so um, just think about like where people, where is the majority of people going? Do, do the opposite. Do the opposite of that. <laughs> yeah. So um, I hope you guys like this. This is our five tips to make your next cruise vacation feel more luxurious. If you guys like this style of video, this is our first time doing this. Yeah. Definitely different, fun. <laughs> uh, it's like a longer form version of what we condense in our TikToks and mm -hmm. our in our reels. So let it, us know if yeah. you like this form. Um, let us know what information you want to see next from us. We would love to chat chat about it. Yeah, happy cruising, happy travel, guys. Thank you all so much for the support. Cheers.